Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us and for this special figure showcase and review we're going to be looking at the 2010 Transformers Generations Red Alert figure. So we're going to do this video, we're going to have a detailed look at him in both of his modes, help you decide how you want to display him. We'll look at the accessories that come with him and I'll point out things that you need to be aware of if you have to purchase him one for yourself. We can then have a quick look at other figures that have shared the same mould um, as him. We will of course, because he's a Generations figure, do some comparisons with him and his original generation oneself in both modes. I'm going to tell you about the homages that this has got to the Japanese figures. And indeed, we can see how he looks with some other figures in the same toy line. So, as you can see, quite a bit to get through with this video. So as I start to put these away, I'd like to remind anybody who's not subscribed to this channel, if you'd like to hit that subscribe button for me now, please, because it really will help me out. And we're going to start off slightly differently. We're going to start off with him in his alternate mode, because that's obviously how he would come if you would have purchased him that way. So, as I say, 2010, the first real, shall we say, Generations toy line, as it was indeed pointed out on the packaging right there. You can see Generations, and this is pretty much where they all started um, after that. So we had had the classics in the universe a bit before it, but 2010 was a pretty much where they started the Generations. The alternate mode is absolutely beautiful, as you can see. Lovely detail on the rims, black tyres, etc. The thing that makes this slightly different from the other figures that have used the mould, like Sideswipe, etc., is obviously you've got this lighting bar there. But by doing this, it makes these two parts pretty much redundant because you can't attach anything to it because the light bar gets in the way. However, you can attach this to the back like so, and it fits. And to be honest, that looks really good. You've then got his twin blaster. Well, it's not a twin, sorry. You've got the blaster there with the twin bits at the back. The reason why the twin bits are at the back is because this can double up underneath in this particular mode as an exhaust like so. That's why I was saying twin, which reminds me, and it gets me straight to this part here. This is a beautiful homage to the Japanese G1 version of him. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a G1 um, Red Alert box, but I do have a Jazz. So what I want to show you here is on the Jazz box, you can see that he is number six. Whereas and all the boxes in Japan were numbered with, again, exactly that reference numbers to him. Whereas in Japan, his box number was 05 and indeed his Japanese name was alert so obviously this is Meister they changed a few of their names so in Japan his box number was 05 which you can see there and his name was alert so that's a beautiful little I don't know if it's an easter egg or a homage or whatever but it's just one of them things that is so so clever um, again decals on this look really good um, you can't see too much underneath it which is perfect to be honest we've got the Autobot logo coming through um, and as you can see I mean maybe you've got fists there which you can tell but the rest of it is all tucked away really neatly even though obviously it's a different um, type of car let's have a look at it compared with the original generation one figure you can see where the homage is coming from fire rescue fire chief same detail really in the tires same details with the spoiler and the light bars just in a slightly different place um it's it's again it's a brilliant homage what we're going to do very quickly before we come back and have a look at him in his alternate mode let's have a look at the packaging so if i just bring this back a second here he is, all boxed up and tie wrapped in. On the back, we've got his stats. We've got some beautiful artwork. And then what I'm gonna do, if I raise this up, if you want to read that yourself, I'm going to say pause now, and you can read that in your own time. What we're gonna do then, we're gonna come back with him in his robot mode. We're gonna show you how we combine uh, the two accessories up to make a bigger weapon. And we'll do some comparisons then with him and some of the newer versions of him that have been released as well in the Generations toy line. Okay, then we're back. And as you can see, he's pretty much fully in his robot mode. Quick apologies for no transformation process on this video. That is for two reasons. One is to keep the main length of the video down. And two is not to spoil it for anybody who doesn't want it spoiling for themselves. Because they might want to go and get this figure straight afterwards. However, as you can see, I've not got the head up yet that's because i wanted to show you that separately because it is a little bit of a gimmick it's called the head reveal and what you do is you take the back part you slide it around you turn it 180 degrees and you get the head reveal so i just thought i'd show you that the full transformation as i say will be separately uploaded though now 
it's not too bad. It is quite fiddly, to be honest. These arms really are quite fiddly, but when you're looking at him like this, he just looks that little bit out of proportion. That's just come off. Let's see if I can bring that. Oh, I need that folding back. It should fit there. This part, this whole upper chest thing just doesn't, in my opinion, look right. And it's not just on him. It's pretty much on them all. This was a uh, collector's club version a breakdown pretty much you can tell using the same mold and all of this just looks too raised up and then funnily enough you've got another uh, collector's club version or use of this mold this is double punch this is obviously if he looks different that's because you can have him either way because he's punch and counter punch sorry not double punch um and yeah this this whole front section just it just seems too big um thankfully though obviously in a lot of the updated versions we've had of him since then um they've managed to well they use completely different mold don't they even with sunstreaker it's it's not too bad i suppose because you've got the front of him there and ironically enough the original owner of the mold sideswipe i haven't got a loose one but you can see how they all pretty much do look the same the funny thing um about it is is it's pretty much it is it's sideswipes head as well they didn't change the head um uh, which you know uh, which they did with the Henke version. Look, there's G1 Sideswipe, and there's this Red Alert head. Now, what I mean by that is the Henke version, which again, funnily enough, was released in Japan, they used the correct red head, which is looking like that one there, which I'm sure you'll agree probably looks that little bit better. But figure-wise, articulation, you can see the head will go all the way around. It does slot, yeah, it does go up and down as well. Shoulders are ball and socket, so all the way around. Plus you've got this extra movement there. You've got a swivel underneath, you've got bicep flexion, you've got a wrist swivel. There's loads of articulation in this. You've got a waist swivel, you've got hips, which are ball and socket, knee bend, ankle tilt, rock, etc. Really, really articulate. His only downfall is exactly what I'm saying and showing you now. He is just a little bit out of proportion um, however the black head does of course compare and be exactly the same as his original generation one self i think with all this up here that would have been much better if they'd have got like an over the shoulder cannon but they just haven't and you can lift this slightly up but you can see that it's definitely off there so it should be all the way down there and indeed slot into position it's a good homage though you can see it really is uh, the blasters i'm going to show you um you can do two things with this you can't unfortunately attach this here uh, which you can do with the rest because the bar was there so what i mean by this is if you have a look at the other ones using this particular mold you can attach this as a bit of a rocket pack to the back of him but because you've got the light bar on here you can't do that at all unfortunately so you can have just the gun in one hand um, and then, yeah, this you can't really do too much with. I suppose you could put it on the front, could you? Let's have a look. This is me just completely ad-libbing. You could-ish, but it would look awful. You can attach the gun to his hand, but what you could do is get this, fold these down, and then this will fit into there. So you've got the combined weapon, which, funnily enough, you can probably just about make out on that package in there. So that's a good little use for it. Although I find with these, they are incredibly temperamental and they very, very rarely do hold their position. So I'm just going to pop that there for a second. I'm now going to bring in some of the more uh, recent releases of him because Red Alert at the moment has had so much love. He really has, which is good to be fair. Uh, so we've got, let's have a look. We've got two, well, we've got a Siege and I think one was Earthrise. Uh, but that's because it, um, it was a Netflix one. So you can see these have got the red head, which look good. And then, of course, the more recent one. I think there was actually two Kingdom ones, to be honest. Um, but I've just got this one off the shelf. Uh, that's probably his better version, to be fair. I'm sure you'll probably agree. So what I can do now with this is we can go oldest, one in the middle, and latest. And then you can, I suppose, have a guess or have a decision on which one you think is better we can tell how big he is compared to deluxe figures at the moment they are big deluxe figures the old ones he's not as big as what is a new voyager class standard figure but you can see they do tower above the uh, newer uh, deluxe size figures shall we say 
Um, let's bring out Wheeljack. So this is the same toy line. And as soon as I've said that, he doesn't tower above him. He's a little bit smaller. Um, but again, he was released at exactly the same time in 2010. Yeah, he's quite small because of his legs. But there we go. There's not really much more to say about this guy. Um, again, it's up to you whether you're a bit of a completionist like me or you want to collect. Or well, maybe if you really like the character, but because I think he does have a much, much better updated version of him. There's probably, again, as I say, unless for the reasons I just give you, there's no real reason to go back and indeed uh, search this one out. Even though it was a very popular mould and it was used an absolute abundance of times but i hope you enjoyed looking at him again if you want to watch the transformation that is separately uploaded in the meantime though thanks for watching guys take care